Frozen Music is a video series from ABB presenting unique building projects and the architects behind them to a global community. Follow us around the world. Welcome back, and now we're going to hear about the winner of the health category of the Future Project Awards, and this is uh, the Hampton Saving Main Street Emergency Hospital uh, by HDR. Please start your presentation. Uh, greetings, everybody, from uh, the central United States. Morning for us. Uh, good afternoon to or evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. I'm Tom Trenelon, Design Director with the Great Plains Studio. And I'm Cole Wyckoff, also with the Great Plains Studio. Uh, we're excited to get an opportunity to present this project to you. And, and the interesting thing about this is that it is about using the economic uh, capacity of, of critical access hospitals to create live urban environments for rural communities. And the interesting thing about this project is it has some roots with the World Architecture Festival. Back in 2018, we saw Rem speak in Amsterdam and got a chance to talk to him about the project. And he shared the same opinions that we had about the importance of these types of projects in rural or countryside communities and how they are important for uh, the future, uh, the future of our entire, entire world and especially our country. We live in unusual, unprecedented times, as you all know. Uh, the, the global pandemic that we're all living through right now has has forced us into isolation from one another. Uh, but there are other forces which have been isolating, especially here in the United States. Um, political divisions, social unrest, um, separation, not just from the pandemic, but from uh, increased use of technology, social media. All of these things have, have uh, influenced all of the work that we do. Uh, but perhaps no more than um, the, the separation uh, between those of us who live in rural parts of our country, rural, rural parts of the world, and those of us who live in, in urban places. That divide has really shifted uh, and, and become more isolating in many ways, uh, at least in our country. Yeah, and it's important to recognize the fact that primarily a lot of people that are probably watching is like, we're a young country, but we have flipped in that time from nearly, you know, nearly 80% of our population now lives in cities and only 20% are in rural populations. But those small communities are still important. And in a lot of ways, they feel neglected and they, they still crave positive urban and, uh, you know, and great community environments. Those don't go away just because of the size of your town. Now we're gonna take you to, uh, we're gonna fly you over here in the middle of the United States. You can see the Rockies and the Great Lakes. And then this beautiful tapestry of, of uh, flyover country as we kind of zoom in on this community that is Haxton, Colorado, small farming community. Population is around 900 people. Interesting thing is that the hospital itself has about 100 people employed by them. That makes them the largest employer in the city. And the interesting thing that is that's 10% of the population if they're all together at one time. And the, this shift from uh, rural to urban has really diminished resources for rural hospitals. Uh, and many hospitals and communities like Haxton are really suffering. So too are the main street environments, the kind of small but, but critical urban fabric that exists in these small communities. And Haxton is, is not unique. It is, is very typical of, of many communities like it in the United States in that not only are hospitals struggling, but, but these urban um, settings, small though they may be, are also really struggling. So this project seeks to solve two problems with one solution. Um, it seeks to use the, the economic engine of the rural hospital and infuse it into uh, the Main Street environment that exists in Haxton um, to create a synergistic um, benefit for both. Um, and we see this really as a, as a pilot, something that could be adopted and used in communities like Haxton, uh, elsewhere in the United States and perhaps uh, beyond. This is a, like, again, the intention is to move things in and be able to create a certain amount of, of density. 
these pro these communities are still dealing with issues of, of walkability and others, just like uh, some of the slower socioeconomic elements of larger cities. And, and it's really a process where we talk about uh, decon to recon and reconstitution, that is, is that the ability to go through and reconsider what is available as far as good infrastructure uh, using the existing structural elements or, or modules to come into that place and then bringing those activating program elements and introducing them into the main street. And we, we do this with a, a restrained kind of form that's built on the idea of using local uh, building techniques, things that are found in, in local industry, be it agriculture uh, specifically. Um, so simple shed forms that can be constructed by local trades folk um, and, and with locally sourced materials and really making an intervention on Main Street that is a, a kind of a light touch um, and deploying those parts of the program from the hospital, which can be shared with the community on that side of, of the site. So the street frontages that you see along Main Street would be rehabilitated and supported by the hospital with things like a shared kitchen that can support a yeah. restaurant, public space that can be used for, for public gathering events, a uh, pharmacy that can be used by both the hospital and the community alike. And then as we move further into the site from right to left on the screen, uh, the more kind of out and out healthcare environments start to emerge, an inpatient uh, setting for uh, the care of patients, a long-term care residence for the elderly and somewhat infirmed in the, in the community. And then on the far west end of the site, uh, a set of smaller scale buildings um, that function as uh, uh, also multi-purpose multi with the community, some shared housing that could be used by the hospital and uh, community residents, a clinic and a, a rehabilitation center. And, and so the important part is, is that the elements that like in the case of this one, country, the Country Rose is a flower shop that was already on Main Street, it was successful, gets integrated in and then is supported by we taking the kitchen out and becoming a diner on Main Street. One of the older buildings that you can see there that had been removed is actually turned into a marketplace. We also make sure that although we're dealing with a small community, that context and, and massing is considered in the fact we keep the two-story structures to Main Street and then try to reduce, we do reduce that scale as we go towards the more residential neighborhoods to the back of the site. And forming all of these structures on site was really informed by the notion of porosity throughout, both from uh, thinking about porosity from the perspective of occupants within, looking out, having visual access to the community and community spaces outside, but also from the outside in, bringing people into the site from all directions. In this case, uh, an image showing the uh, kind of pedestrian access to the inpatient environment of the hospital, uh, which was formerly an alleyway behind uh, the street frontages on Main Street. And, and what we're trying to do with the program is get double or triple or quadruple use out of that. In the case of the swimming pool, the community wanted a swimming pool for the whole community, but we also placed the physical therapy studio along with recreation therapy on either side of those so that we could actually create these synergies so that people could use those for multiple uses. And the long-term care environment, the, the, the housing for the elderly uh, in, in the community of Haxton, oftentimes facilities like this are, are built in isolation and are very isolating for their residents. They include things like community spaces um, for residents to gather, but those community spaces are very rarely shared with the community. We put the community space of the long-term care facility right at the center of the site, made it accessible from all directions, we really see this as a, as a kind of a magnetic force for the community to come gather, share, and connect with not only the, the residents, but with one another. And it's something where the other thing that we know about this is that those elders in the community, the longer that they can take uh, charge of their life and do things for themselves, it's important. And in that case, the ability to put the market and the pharmacy, though it can be accessed by the community on the main street, on the backside, that community space that Cole talked about is directly accessible to them so they can walk and, and get there on their own. And you see here, this image is, is one of the few, it's, it's, it's really the only space on main street that we're reconstructing. And so that becomes the lobby, allowing visitors to come off of main street, access public amenities, but also pass through and beyond to the healthcare environment if they're coming to visit a loved one. 
Um, so again, the idea of, of porosity and allowing for multiple pathways uh, to and from um, the kind of important nodes of the project was really, really critical to the way that we organized the programs on site. And, you know, this final image shows the, the kind of center of the, of the site design, uh, a gathering court, an outdoor space, um, you know, really trying to uh, bring some uh, civic space back to Main Street, connected to this facility, to the hospital, to all of the functions, uh, something that is really lacking in communities like Haxton, uh, and something that, that is, is really driving the idea behind this project, which is uh, bringing people back together and kind of restitching those, those divides which have uh, caused so many problems in our country. And with that, I mean, I know that was a lot to take in. We did it as quickly as we could, but uh, we're open to your, uh, to your questions. And thanks again for letting us share that. And on behalf of the community of Haxton, we're, we're honored to, to uh, receive the, you know, be the winner for the health futures category. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, Peter, I wonder if you'd like to start with this. I think it raises a very intriguing question and I'm not sure to what extent uh, it can be answered, but you take a very small community which has already grown itself, but you have this ex extremely large, as you said, extremely large component, the expression of which in one way has to be uh, not not kind of threatening what's left of the town, or, you know, when you've taken hospital. On the other hand, you mention you mention um, the civic space, and one then wonders at Martin and thinks in history, what is the civic space of a 900-person place? It's very different from the civic space of a 9,000 or 90,000 or 900,000, and yet you want it to be a civic space. I wonder if that's correct, or whether you simply say one of the spaces acts as a civic space, but in all, to all intents and purposes, it is still of the scale of the little place. The other thing is the nature. Do, how do you express the presence of an institution? Now, on the one hand, you want to, in a way, deinstitutionalize the institution. That's part of the, the game of your project. On the other hand, there's still an entrail of intention. Do you say this particular room or this particular roof is to do with, with health? And this particular roof isn't to do with health, it's, it's to do with selling sausages, but it could be to do with health. Um, I'm, I'm interested in this notion of how much you can really make a hybrid and at what points do the, does the necessity for particular message giving come through? Do you follow me? It's a really intriguing yeah, I, problem. No, I think that that was one of the uh, the compartmentalization of how we had to keep the diagnostic and treatment elements and the inpatient elements of the hospital are unique. But there, and the intention though is we kind of use the the main street and as Cole showed the entry and the way to kind of screen them and allow them to exist in the middle. And I think that the what we we were taking specifically is the traditional uh, critical access hospital uh, or hospital in the United States in the past was it's a it's an isolated structure with parking all around it and we tried to introduce it into the center so that the building itself with the exception of that one entry point on the alley is pretty much surrounded by the rest of the the community elements and i think the intention too is that although i know we're in we were in the health category it it's more of an urban planning uh, uh exercise than really it was about designing a hospital it was helping to deconstruct that hospital is as best we could and use those economic engine elements and introduce them in ways that they could more uh, help support help support the economy of the community. Did you have anyone you want to well, add to just, that? Just to say that, of course, we have to solve for the issues of, of um, visibility and access and, and um, you know, encourage people to be able to find uh, their destination, understand where they need to go if they have an emergency, understand how they get to their loved one if they're visiting them. Uh, in, in an inpatient environment. Um, but to the extent that, that we felt we were able, we wanted to kind of break apart, um, as Tom said, the, the kind of 
uh, paradigm of a hospital being on an island as this um, kind of mass institution with a, a circle drive and a, and a lawn and, and um, you know, living in complete isolation from, uh, at least physical isolation from the community and take the parts of the hospital that could be embedded in the community and, and do that. And we had to do that too with, I mean, we worked with the hospital and with our mechanical engineers to make sure that, I mean, the ability to isolate certain parts of it, especially after the pandemic took place, that there are places that we can isolate with positive, you know, positive airflow and, that, and negative airflow that we can, we can do that to maintain those types of situations. But for the most part, we did our best to just kind of inter, interwine those, uh, intertwine those uh, spaces. I hope, hopefully that I answered. I mean, it's a really good question and uh, appreciate it. Did we answer that? I, yeah, I think we need to move sorry. on to some other questions, if that's okay. Anka, what, what's, what's your reaction to this? No, I, I don't really have a question, but I, I have a comment. Interestingly, you know, given the challenges of uh, just the way our urban spaces are and the amount of people uh, or density that hospitals need to cater to, uh, a lot of our hospitals naturally kind of deal with these kind of situations where uh, a lot of the spaces become community hubs because people travel with their loved ones and they have to kind of mm -hmm. stay put or be around. So yeah, in the pandemic, it's, it's been a crazy situation and uh, it's been a very difficult time for all the medical institutions in the country. But yeah, it, it is quite a challenge for a hospital like Institute to kind of open up and start sharing spaces uh, with the urban fabric. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I Mariana, would you like to come in here? I think it's a lovely project with lovely illustrations. Very dear uh, uh, way of dealing with the situation. A whole new take on healthcare, which I think is quite innovative and that we need to, to look for just not saning the illness, but also allowing people to be happier and healthier. I think it's, it's just a compliment. Well done. Well, and my, a lot of the comments very go to, the, to our client as well. They were really progressive folks. So it was, thank you for that. But my, my comment is, is it going to get built? Uh, it's sorry, in, it's in, we're, sorry, in the, we're in the process of working through that with some federal and state uh, funding issues. Hmm. Well, <laughs> somewhere from I don't know where Robert Venturi is looking on this and smiling because I think <laughs> with the image that, that that strikes me was your facade of, of, of Main Street and that you know it looks like not that I know very many American small um, settlements but um, you know I, 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 what I know comes from Western films and they have their bank they have their saloon they have their chapel they have their funeral director who's probably the most successful business given what seems to have happened in those sorts of uh, settlements um, and each of them has a facade that carries an extraordinary amount of social information I mean the bank was the most clearly classical building because that that seems to be what banks want to think they should uh, how they should represent themselves and I think that, that working with that sort of, if I can use the word iconography, is actually really, really interesting for something that, you know, if there was a doctor in those 19th century settlements in Western films, it was someone who probably drank a little bit too much whiskey with a leather bag and, uh, you know, at most a sort of stethoscope in it, um, who might be called out to, to, to help someone who had already been shot dead. So, you know, it, it, the, the, the idea of healthcare and that sort of architecture is almost a complete disjunction. And I think one of the things I really enjoy is that you have brought, somehow brought them together. Well, I'm glad you noticed that because we really did think about that as in the classic sense of urban planning in the United States when lawlessness was the way in the, in the West, it was the courthouse. But nowadays lawlessness is not really what we need to worry about it. It's more about equity. It's more about the idea of health. It is more about climate, and that was very. I'm glad that you picked that up because that was significant in the in the conceptualization that we went through. Mm. Good. Well, anyone else got a, a, a final quick comment? But I think a, a, a very interesting project. Thank you for presenting it to us, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, we're sorry that we're not in Lisbon with everybody. It was. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All. We 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 all are. <laughs>
So we hope <laughs> we hope to see everyone in Lisbon next year. But um, anyway, well, thank you very much, and we will take a short break and then move on to the final project, which is the second winner in the cultural category. So we'll see you all in a short time. Thank you.